I like making missiles in games that aren't exactly designed for it, but when it comes to Kerbal Space Program, I wanted to do something really special. Specifically, I wanted to try making a fully automatic launchable ICBM that I could simply launch, choose a target, and have it do the rest for me. And you can see me loading into the sandbox now, and just building up a simple rocket. The first goal I had was just to launch this rocket into the ground and see what kind of damage it did. Now, I see coming off the launch pad now and aiming back at the Kerbal Space Center, I figured that this approach would pretty much be the simplest thing I could do, and trying it out here, I get a pretty good explosion, but I figured I could do a little bit better than that. So the next thing I did here was load on a bunch more boosters, and you can see me putting some engines below those. Now I have a lot more power, but also I figured I should get a bigger explosion out of this. So I slowly made my way over to the Kerbal Space Center, and you can see when I hit the ground now, it's definitely a bigger explosion, but it's still not really that big. So I decided to get rid of that, and I wanted to start on what I thought was going to be the obvious solution. You can see here, I put down the cockpit, I surrounded it with some clamps, and you can see also I'm putting down some decouplers and some tiny boosters. Once I had one of these sections in place, I started copying them on top of each other, and it wasn't too bad. You can see I get a lot of rockets going around, and there's definitely a lot of explosions, but there was something about the radius that I wasn't that happy about. I figured though, only with 32 boosters, I wasn't going to get that many explosions, so I decided to go up here at 96, and you can see now I'm using a fairing to cover up that top area, and I'm building a rocket beneath it. With this, I wanted to try attacking the Kerbal Space Center again, and seeing what it would do. Trying this out, I had some pretty good thrust, although I didn't really secure the rocket very well, so it started doing this, but I figured we weren't going very far anyway, so as long as it held together, it should be alright. Now, you can see I deployed off that fairing here, and also all of those rockets. Now, this approach definitely was better than before. I really liked the smoke, but looking at all the rockets on the ground, the spread is kind of random, and I just really didn't feel like it was concentrated enough to really make a solid impact. So I decided to start out with another fuel tank, but this time you can see that I'm putting a motor on top of it. Now once I got that motor in place here, I started stacking a few more of them, and the plan was going to be to spin these up and throw things away from the rocket. I was a little worried about the weight on this, because the motors are pretty heavy, but you can see here I started building up some arms, and the idea was I could stack these motors to get even more speed. So with a few fuel tanks on the end of these long bars, I wanted to see what this would do. And on the launch pad now, I tried clicking on the motors and starting to spin them up, but I noticed something strange. Whenever motors are stacked like this, they don't seem to quite behave as expected, and it kind of just started vibrating around. It was starting to spin up a little bit, and I decided with a little bit more care, I was able to get these to actually start spinning up without going too crazy. Now, once I got up to a speed that I liked, I decided to launch off before it started vibrating apart, and this was a better spread than I was getting with those boosters, and in theory, if I can do it right, it should be able to be done lighter. Now, you can also see I switched to using one motor here, which will reduce my speed a little bit, but it makes the whole thing way more stable. And while it was accelerating better, it did still kind of bend side to side, and I realized I was going to need to make a few improvements. So the first thing that I did is I shrunk down the arms, and I also decided to add six times as many fuel tanks. Now to simplify the design, I also got rid of the large fuel tank, and I decided to clamp right to the batteries. This almost worked, but then it started to do this, so I had to make sure to use struts to hold everything together together, and finally now I was able to start to spin it up and try it out. Now once I was up to speed here, you can see I launched these away, and this was looking pretty good. This was way more ordered than I ever was getting with the boosters, and you can see to improve on this, I wanted to add another layer, but in order to make this work, I can't just stack motors on top of each other without them starting to act weird, so I tried this setup here to hold it together, but clearly the arm that I used was too long, and I wasn't really able to hold it together very well. At low speed though, I did do a launch, and you could see sort of the pattern we're going for here. Now I simplified the whole design down like this, and now you see I'm using towers of struts to kind of hold it all together in the middle. This let me get this test off, and suddenly this was looking a lot closer to something that might work. This was a lot of explosions, but I realized there is still kind of a lot of holes in the design, so what I wanted to do was shrink this whole thing down so I could save on weight and stack even 
more parts to throw away. Now, as a little trick, I also wanted to just throw away decouplers and not put anything on them. This almost works, but the decouplers have a lot of air resistance, and you can see that they kind of all end up in the same ring, even if I make the motors go different speeds. So for a little bit of weight on those to give them some momentum, I tried using some battery packs here, and I wanted to see how it would do. This definitely helped the situation. You can see now we have some different rings, but it still wasn't quite enough here, so I went back to using fuel tanks, but I did stack them in a much more efficient way. Now, while I was trying this design out, I was waiting to see how fast things would go, but apparently there is a max speed and eventually it all just kind of does that. So before it exploded this time, I launched it off and you can see now we're getting the much better ring pattern we saw before. But with this looking so good, I stacked another layer of these on top here and while it was starting to bend away, the pattern was definitely getting a lot more filled out here and I thought with a few more layers, I might be able to get some really good distributions. And while this design is definitely better than the last one that I made, it still ended up being really heavy and it's mainly because I'm using so many motors to get these things all spun up. The best way to do this was definitely going to be to use just one motor, but I was wondering how I was going to do that and still make things fly different distances. Now the solution that I came up with here was putting decouplers right on the motor like this, and you can see this time I'm using xenon tanks to get thrown away. That's where I realized though, if I stack these structural fuselages on top of each other, what I can do is put these decouplers on them, but angle them a little bit more and more as I get closer to the bottom. Bottom. This will make them fire more down, and therefore they aren't going to go as far. Now I still did decide to use more than one motor here, but I'm still using way less than before, and exceed this new design optimization, the explosion pattern is a little bit better than before. So once I was happy with that, what I wanted to start working on next was the actual missile, and you can see to build this, I put down a couple of large fuel tanks, and on the bottom here, I put down an engine plate with a bunch of these vector engines. This is pretty much the simplest rocket I could have made here. Here, but I really just needed it to do one thing, get into orbit. And after adding on some fins here, trying it out on the launch pad, it was a little slow, but it was getting off the ground here, and that's pretty much all I really needed. Now you can see I started moving off to the side here, and my plan was once again to hit the Kerbal Space Center. I wasn't flying very carefully though, and I ended up overshooting it a little bit, so I wanted to use the last semi-fuel to cancel out some speed here to see if I could land on it. Trying to do this though, I managed to badly overshoot it again, but I figured this still would be a pretty good test to see if this design would work while coming through the atmosphere. And you can see deploying off the fairing and starting to spin up those motors. I decided to release the payload a little earlier than I wanted to because I was worried about blowing up, and you could see once I did that, the massive debris field that followed. Now looking at this, everything was hitting the ocean in this super wide pattern here, so ideally I realized I was going to want to try to throw these off close to the ground, but I at least in theory, I thought that this looked pretty good. So once again here, I'm coming off the ground, and the goal for this test was to actually hit the Kerbal Space Center. Now this time, as I was getting near it, I launched off those rings of debris, and you can see it's a pretty good ring of damage. This was what I was looking for damage-wise, but now I need to make this missile work almost entirely on its own. To do this, there was one part I badly needed, and it was this Cal 1000 controller. What this is going to let me do is program a ton of stuff in, and you can see the first thing I did was attach my engines to it. Now you can see that the basic idea is that I can control different parameters of the engines, such as the thrust here, but what I really wanted to focus on was these fins. The idea is that I can set them to deploy and undeploy, and by doing this, it should let me controllably steer my rocket over to the side. The annoying thing with the controller is that it seems like you can't set it to actually move the rocket using the normal pilot control so I had to come up with a weird solution like this. Once I started it up though here, you can see that once those pieces deploy, it starts to spin the rocket around, and once they stop deploying, the rocket also stops spinning. This wasn't exactly what I was going for here, I wanted the rocket to tip over to the side, but at least as an idea, this did seem to work to move the rocket, and trying it out now in a different flight, I reconfigured it, and you can see me slowly tipping over to the left. This was looking great, although I overdid it a little bit here, and started to go 
straight into the ground. I figured with a little bit of tuning though, I should be able to get this to work here. So what I did next is configure those parameters to shorten up the amount of time that they're deployed. And you see launching off here, eventually the rocket starts to tip over, but it also stops at a certain point. But there was a small issue. I wanted the rocket to tip once again to be parallel with the surface, but the problem was that I was going to be so high up, there's no atmosphere for those fins to even work. So after having to manually override that, I realized I was going to need a different solution. My next idea though was to put down one of these hinges and I'm putting a probe core on it. Now you can see here as I rotate the hinge, it also rotates the probe core and this is really important. Now I can't interact with any of the flight controls, but what I can do is turn on stability assist and have the probe core try to make it still stay perfectly upright. That means that by rotating the hinge, the probe core is going to try to rotate the entire rocket to keep pointing straight up. But in this first test, I wasn't really seeing any manual tipping, so just to make sure the issue wasn't the hinge though, I switched over to this rotation servo, and you can see that fundamentally it'll do the same thing. It's a little more annoying to set up here because I need a couple of these blocks, but once I got the probe core on it, this did seem to work in the editor here, so trying it out once again, I wanted to see if this would get me anywhere. In this first test though, the probe core I think was mounted upside down, which caused some minor issues. So we ran it back here and you can see this time it's looking a lot better. Now also, you can see it's automatically tipping to the side and this was looking really good. In this first test here, I was able to get pretty far on this system and I wanted to see if it was gonna be able to get me into orbit. Now I'm not gonna wanna use this exact orbital path later on and I'll explain that in a minute, but you can see here, once I reached my second burn node and started to burn, it was looking good at first, but eventually the rocket got really unstable and started to twist. With the rocket getting pretty close to working though, what I wanted to do next was put down a decoupler and this is going to let me drop off the main fuel tank area from the payload. I also decided to put down some parachutes here and this is to hopefully make it just a little bit easier for me to launch off at the exact height I want. I also decided to go with some air brakes here to hopefully slow me down a little bit. Now finally, I added on a second controller and this one's going to control all of the stuff that actually initiates the payload. So you can see now, once again, I'm firing off the rocket, and I also added on some extra fins here to make it a little bit more stable. Now, one other change you'll see is that I'm launching off to the north rather than off to the east. The reason that I'm doing this is that I want to be able to hit anywhere on Kerbin, and if I go into a polar orbit, eventually, as Kerbin rotates beneath me, I should be able to hit any target. The problem is, though, I'm going to lose that little extra boost I get from Kerbin Kerbin's rotation, which will make it just a little bit harder to get into orbit. Starting off, I got into that second burn pretty easily here and things were looking great, but eventually I noticed the rocket started deviating to the side. I tried to cut the boosters to see if this would help, but it seemed like I was pretty doomed at this point, though I was getting extremely close. Another problem I was facing is that I also was basically out of fuel at this point, so I added on a small fuel tank for just a little bit of extra fuel, and you can see I also deleted off all of my fins since my main stability problems are happening once I'm out of the atmosphere, so they don't really seem to be adding much anyway. Now I decided to give this a go to see if this would behave any differently here, and you can see once again that first burn went super well. I didn't get quite as high as last time, but that does make sense since I'm holding a lot more fuel. Once again though, starting off that second burn, it looked all right at first, but eventually I got super unstable here and just started spinning out. Now after quite a while, I realized one of my problems might be that my center of mass is really far down. To fix that, you can see that I'm pushing the fuel tanks slightly into each other here, and this should overall move forward the center of mass. So once again, getting up into the air, here. Here, first burn went pretty well, and I decided to start up the second burn now. Things were definitely better for longer here, but it didn't take long for them to eventually devolve back into random spinning. Clearly though, what I had done before helped a little bit, and I thought with a little bit of extra stability assist, I might have been able to keep this thing going. So back in the editor, I added on an RCS fuel tank, and you can see that once I got that on there, I also added on some RCS thrusters. With a bunch of these, I figured I'd be able to keep myself 
going in the direction I want. And you can see now, launching off the rocket once again and getting back up to that second burn. These had a minimal impact though, which I was a little surprised by. So for one last act, I decided to clip all the fuel boosters directly into each other, which made my rocket a lot shorter. With this design here, getting up to the second burn was still no problem, and starting this out, it was clear that it was a lot more stable. There was still a little bit of spinning going on, so after just a tiny bit more compression, I tried this out once again, and finally here I was able to make it entirely through that second burn without the rocket spinning out. And you can see after not too long, I finally got a full orbit going, although it was entirely out of fuel. I was going to need a tiny bit to get myself back into the atmosphere, but seeing as this was my first successful test, I wanted to try doing a dry run here, and you can see me spinning around Kerbin now to see what I was going to do. Now, once I turned on infinite propellant here, what I wanted to do was scope out a good area to land on and fire off the engines. Now, you can see here, I was able to cut a lot of speed now, and originally I was targeting that little island, but I realized I was going to miss it, so this was just going to be a quick test over the ocean. Now I was quite glad I decided to do this test here, because while everything was looking pretty good, I had realized I forgot to program in the fairing blowing away, and if I didn't do that, it probably would have been really bad. Otherwise though, you can see me entering the atmosphere now, and while there are a lot of flames, it didn't really get anywhere, and you can see me falling down here and the parachutes doing their thing. Another huge issue I realized though, is that while the motors are spinning up, my plan was to manually launch off the missile, but for whatever reason, I couldn't launch off the decouplers on my own. This was kind of annoying, but at least I figured that out during a rehearsal run, and you can see now I'm selecting all the decouplers and I'm putting them on that launch controller to blow them away at the right time. This took a little while to get everything programmed in here, but once I was happy with it, you can see me launching off now for the full test. Now once again here, you can see that first burn went pretty well, and I got myself just above the atmosphere. That was exactly what I was looking for, and you can see now I deployed off the fairing actually earlier than I did before. This should save me just a tiny bit of fuel, which I was hoping would be just enough to get myself out of an orbit. And after waiting not too long here, you can see the engines kicked back in to get myself into that full orbit. This took a lot of tuning to get the length perfectly right on, and you can see here I even did get it a little bit wrong and I overshot a little bit, but I figured it would be all right here and left with 128 meters per second of fuel left, it was just enough that I should be able to land anywhere. And after a couple of orbits, I found a continent I wanted to try attacking and you can see to do that, I just had to position myself to face retrograde and otherwise just turn on that other controller and watch it happen. It did not burn for very long at all, but that was probably for the best. I'm going to be entering the atmosphere pretty much at full speed here, so a shallow angle was going to be really important to make sure I wasn't going to blow up. And you can see once I hit the atmosphere here, I really start to focus on getting myself straight, and the flames were definitely pretty intense. But once everything seemed to calm down a bit, I decided to launch off the fuel tank and start to focus on launching off the payload. Things were looking pretty good here, and you can see now the motor started to spin up, and not long after that, all the decouplers started to go off at slightly different times. This was probably not ideal, because you can see that a few of them do hit into each other and cancel out, but the vast majority of the debris is getting thrown away, and you can see this huge cloud beneath me. Now the good thing is that since I'm in the atmosphere, they tend to not spread out way too far, and you can see all of the explosions beneath me. This was what I had set out to do here, and overall I was pretty happy with how it looked. So guys, it's looking more like the second game's not going to be coming back, so if you want to see more of this, I'd definitely be interested to hear. And otherwise, till next time.